All right, North Central connected. It's July, sweltering hot. We are live from the uh, North Central sauna. The AC's it's out. Not right? air conditioned. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> it, this, this office is uh, so, the air, AC's being repaired. The AC's so. being repaired. This podcast may be short. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We'll see you next month. No, um, so we're going to get right into it. I know we've had a lot of developments happening around North Central. And um, Kevin, I'm sure you have a lot of questions for, or answers for people to have questions. <laughs> you no, know, you, were, you were probably right the first time. Uh, now, uh, some things going on that we're managing day to day, week to week, month to month. And um, you, you'll be listening to this podcast in, in um, early July. And as you know, it's hot out there. We, we started picking up extreme heat earlier in the year than normal. Um, probably early to mid-June, we started picking up extreme heat. So, saw a lot of mid-90s, uh, hit 100 a couple of days. We're in that same area right now. The humidity's up. And i got to be honest, forecasters do not show relief in sight. Uh, maybe highs in the low 90s by the third week of July. And not that we want tropical activity, but sometimes we'll pick up some of that now, and at least we'll get some moisture up here and get some rain. We're not, we're not getting rain either. Uh, so the, the heat has been something that's very difficult. Um, <clears throat> another thing that we're managing is our supply chain. And there are many items that we use routinely at North Central. Some of them we have to replace quite a bit due to the heat. Uh, and we are having a difficult time getting them right now. And, and this goes back to COVID, to labor issues, um, to logistical issues, shipping issues, just the ability to get shipping containers. And when things finally started shipping, um, there was a lot of cost involved. So we're having a difficult getting some of our key components. Anything that requires core steel is being delayed and is very costly. Um, we're seeing, I think on average, probably about a 30% increase, 30 to 50% increase in all of our uh, materials inventory right now. Uh, so that's, that's very difficult to manage. We, we've got to pay for the stuff, so that's not what's keeping me up at night. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the supply chain and making sure there's not a block. Um, some items that we used to be able to purchase and get within weeks, we now have to wait and get within months. There are some items that we are accustomed to getting within months that we are looking years. Um, distribution transformers are of a serious concern right now. Uh, also is uh, our equipment, which we can repair equipment, but we've got equipment that's uh, lagging two years out there. And really, as far as budgeting processes, we're being told to get in line, it'll get manufactured, you'll probably get it in two years, we don't have a clue what it's gonna cost. So you can see some of the um, difficulties that we're having. So right now, we're just having to prioritize to a certain degree what we do. <clears throat> we've got to keep the power on. So we're gonna make sure that we've got a significant, uh, a substantial at least or at least a measured storm inventory we've got to be able to respond in case of a storm fortunately in the summer uh, we don't have a lot of circumstances uh, usually even you know, once you get in the middle of summer there may be some lightning storms but you don't have to be concerned about uh, tornadoes and, and obviously ice storms and, and stuff such as that was well, a little trimmer up on the new madrid fault so maybe we can keep that away Focus on, though, keeping the power on. Then we'll make sure that we have enough materials on hand for new construction. After that's going to become routine maintenance and then make ready. We talk about make ready costs, and that goes in line um, with our high-speed Internet product and trying to get fiber optic cables hung. Uh, make ready is looking, we're, we're, we're cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to stay on pace with that, but there could be some supply chain issues as far as poles, and then as far as the fiber product itself, maybe some pedestals. But we're managing all that and trying to make sure um, that you don't see a service interruption. And that's why we say storms are, are at the top. And, and really, if need be, reliability would even circumvent new construction to make sure that our customers right now. So for our developers out there, our builders, most, you know, we're trying and we're doing a pretty good job of letting them know for all the new projects, which what we hit with last week, somebody said they're planning 1,500 homes in a particular area yep. over the next two years. Right. I mean, just just wow. new construction all over the place. Uh, we'll see what inflation now, we're getting a little pumping the brakes on the housing market, what happens and see how that affects it. But we, we, we've been booming and we just want to remind our builders, if you have projects going, please let us know in far as advanced as you can 
and we can try to make sure that we have those materials on hand. Absolutely. Um, some of the bad news that I have for the month of July yeah. is uh, rate-wise. <clears throat> and I've got a lot of numbers in my head, so I may miss a percent or something. But in July, the fuel cost adjustment will increase dramatically. And that is a, a, an adder that TVA charges North Central and that we are contractually um, required to pass that on to the end-use retail consumer, uh, our, our, the people that pay bills in our community. Uh, we are not, we do not have the option to eat some of that. And if you just think about the sheer volume of it, it would be impossible for us to. We are looking at a fuel cost adjustment this year, this July, that will be over twice the average over the last three years. It'll be 30% uh, of your total bill. Um, and bills in July, in my opinion, probably could go up as much as 20 plus percent. Uh, you know, you add the fuel costs and you add the, the incredible heat that we're having. And I know people are gonna say, well, I haven't done anything different. Of course you haven't. You've kept that thermostat where it belongs, but with the heat outside, your air conditioner is mm -hmm. going to run more. Just so you'll know, fuel cost, and, and we used to have this broken out on our bill uh, to the membership, but we removed it because it caused a lot of confusion, and a lot of our people just didn't want to see it. They didn't want that long telephone bill. They just want something simple. Mm -hmm. Fuel cost is that fuel that is used by the Tennessee Valley Authority to generate power. It in no way implies gasoline cost, the cost to operate our fleet, anything like that. And it consists of the cost of all commodities, whether it be oil, coal, uh, natural gas, even uranium. Uh, I mentioned the heat and the lack of rain. If hydropower production is down, it has to be made up somewhere, so that's more fuel. And it's also made up by what we call off-grid uh, off purchases or, or market purchases, where TVA on a particular hot day in the south may not be able to generate enough power or it may not be economical to generate enough power and they go off the market to another part of the United States and wheel power in. Mm -hmm. There's the cost of that's combined in that as well. Uh, how did fuel get so high? I, I think the commodities just lagged a little bit and the price caught up with us. Yeah. Uh, also, we had some storms in the Tennessee Valley um, late winter, early spring that caused some transmission issues that caused them to go to the market. And sometimes going to the market, um, it's, it's kind of like running to a quick source of, of commodity instead of a long term and the pricing's kind of high. So right now TVA is going through a period of high fuel cost and we will, like I said, contractually have to pass that on to the consumer of which everyone in this room is one. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's gonna be tough. And, and J.D. is going to give you some indication of, of, of what the heat does from a safety standpoint, maybe how you can try to curb your consumption a little bit, even though I want to remind everybody the heat's very dangerous. And we want you to conserve in order to keep your bill down, but, but don't endanger yourself. And we're going to meet here internally very soon as these bills start coming in to try to determine ways that we can uh, give you a little relief as far as trying to figure out ways to spread that payment. Uh, we don't want you to curtail electrical use or set that thermostat too high and, and, and make yourself sick. Um, just just use, use some common sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's interesting, you know, this time of year, it really, when you talk about the fuel charge and, and the different options uh, that TVA has for fueling whatever generation, uh, the diversity uh, in, in TVA being able to choose uh, depending on natural gas prices or you know, uh, what the reservoirs are like, things of that nature to generate electricity, that is a that is a strong asset for TVA to be able to have, and it really speaks this time of year to being able to have that, that diversity um, in what fuel you're gonna generate the power with. So uh, kudos to them for, for having that available. And, you know, we were talking about the supply chain issues and how it affects transformers, and, and we hear a lot about, you know, the effects, the lingering effects from COVID and stuff like that, but you know, something that we're looking at now that's interesting is just really a change in habits. Uh, you know, this global, uh, this global economy that we've been operating in, and then now you throw in all this electric vehicle usage that, you know, requires batteries. And a lot of the raw materials that, 
uh, the manufacturers are using for these batteries are the same thing that we build these distribution transformers out of. And so you have competing interest in this new economy there. Uh, electric vehicle usage, uh, I think even in our area, they're, they're saying that it's, it's, it, it is showing to be twice as much mm -hmm. as a lot of people expected. So, uh, you know, I certainly don't uh, think that the electric vehicle deal is going to go away. And, you know, people are out there, you know, getting long-term long -term contracts for the same raw materials that mm -hmm. we need for the distribution transformer. So it's just interesting, you know, how the market is adjusting to the, to the change and <clears throat> in, in what people are buying and what they're wanting and, and stuff like that. So when we talk about those supplier, those supply chain issues, there's a lot of things causing pressure on that. Um, at, at North Central, we always talk about um, how we continue uh, to develop our workforce. And, you know, in the early uh, summer and up to now, we, you know, we do that every year. Uh, in May and June, we had a couple of large apprentice linemen schools um, that we held uh, in our service territory. And uh, statewide come up, and we had apprentices from across the state that joined us. Uh, and we really do enjoy that. Uh, we're really committed to workforce development in our area, so we're very thankful for that partnership with our statewide association. And uh, today, as a matter of fact, we have a class going on. Our vice president of safety and loss control from our statewide department, Gerald Gordon, he's with us today. And uh, really in partnership with TVPPA, they're doing some joint training down there on incident investigation. Uh, that way, uh, if something does happen, uh, God forbid that it does, but if it does, we have you know, people here from a lot of different perspectives to, you know, find out exactly what happened with the emphasis on making sure that uh, if we have an incident, it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's really the purpose and the focus of the root cause analysis classes. And uh, as Kevin alluded to, the heat, a uh, lot of different uh, topics there to talk about as it relates to the heat, one being in this room. Uh, <laughs> But uh, when you think about the effects uh, of the heat on our workforce, um, you know, we've got our construction and maintenance crews outside working. The, uh, the job that they're doing uh, is a hazardous job. I don't say dangerous. Uh, they have all the training and equipment and tools that they need to make a uh, dangerous job a hazardous job. So it is a hazardous job, but a lot of the personal protective equipment that we use to make it safer uh, it's also hot. So, you know, on top of, uh, you know, just the heat in general, uh, we have to be very careful uh, about the jobs that they're doing, what time of the day they're doing them, uh, and really being concerned about their well-being. It's a time of the year where we really focus uh, to our folks, look, uh, check, on, check on the guy working beside you. You know, just the type of workforce that we have there's not a lot of quit in us. No. We don't give up easy. Uh, and that's a good thing. I, I'm, I'm really prideful about that. You know, um, you know, my coworkers have that great working attitude, but at the same time, you know, this time of year when it gets this hot, you gotta be careful. And so, they're working in conditions hotter than this room. So. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, their, their office, uh, is on the inside of a bucket truck mm -hmm. that usually requires them to wear rubber gloves and sleeves on top of uh, arc-rated clothing. So, um, or in a trench with no airflow. Absolutely, <laughs> in, in a trench with no airflow. And so, uh, you know, we're really thinking about those guys and, and really doing what we can to remind them to, to remain cool, take plenty of breaks, uh, you know, water, things yep. of that nature. Uh, and also, when you talk about the heat, it just leads into the conversation about the performance of our system, which if you look at the investments that's been made, um, you know, and to upgrade our system, to harden our system, uh, to make it more reliable, when you talk about all of the work that's been done on the right-of-ways and things that Kevin talks about on a regular basis, uh, you know, just blocking and tackling those basic things that, that, that we do every day, when the temperature is like it is today, and there's no sign that it's going to let up for the next two weeks, that is when those things really pay off. So we are, we're, very, we're very proud of how the system is performing. Uh, if you look back at June, TVA was sending out notices. It seemed, it seemed like, you know, every day mm -hmm. how they were breaking 
uh, June records for consumption. And, you know, these are records that, that many of them, you know, covered the, the entire existence of TVA, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of them tied records or things that they hadn't seen in 20 years. So uh, not only is our system performing well, um, you know, TVA seems to be performing well and, and, and giving us the power that we need. And so we're thankful for that. But uh, really just kudos to everyone from, from engineering, uh, you know, to the construction crews, uh, to everybody uh, that's responsible for keeping that system going. Uh, they've really done a good job. And uh, that gets me into my next thing when we talk about heat, and that's be patient with us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we are uh, building a uh, to-the-home fiber system, and, um, you know, it is a challenge, one that, you know, that we're certainly up for, but we're cutting a lot of right-of-way, mm -hmm. doing a lot of make-ready work. And uh, when you're trying to do this, uh, this size, this large-scale project, um, you know, there's a lot of things going on. So please continue to be patient with us there. Um, you know, the right of way pays off in, in two ways. We clear the path to get that fiber in there faster and faster. And also, um, you know, as far as keeping the power on, we don't have trees tripping out the circuits and things of that nature. You don't want it to be your property that the outage is on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But, but again, just, you know, just, just think about it. Uh, like I said, I, I know that, you know, when we're going through your neighborhood and there's, there's brush piled up everywhere on both sides of the street and things of that nature, uh, I know it can be challenging, uh, but uh, we are definitely making progress in, in, in bringing a, a great product. That's the things that, that makes me so prideful about what we're doing when you're in the community and you hear people really bragging about the product. And they just talk about how amazing it is um, you know, it, it, it makes it worth it, uh, the difficult days when, when people are upset and everything, but the end product, it, it makes it worth it. So just, just kudos to all that's involved with that. And just remember, uh, check on your neighbors. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you're in a neighborhood, and especially if you have, um, I'm going to say, some retired couples or, or things in that nature or someone that you know it may be homebound or living by themselves, please go by and check in on them. Mm -hmm. uh, when the temperatures are like this, you know, not only are they gonna be happy just to say hi, but you're gonna feel a lot better knowing that they're okay. Absolutely. And so please, uh, I'd just like to close with that and uh, let's, check your let's be seats. our brother's keeper yeah. and, and, and <laughs> you know, make sure that, uh, that we're checking on our neighbors. And yeah, and, and check your back seats of your car. Uh, yeah. you, 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 you had a good point about uh, before we started hitting re uh, record on this podcast, you said leave your cell phone in the back seat. Why is that? Well, one, <laughs> it will keep you from texting and driving. <laughs> and two, uh, if you do have a small child or um, dog or dog, um, statistics show that you will not leave your child or pet in the back seat. Uh, you know, people will remember their cell phone, but yet leave a pet uh, or a young one in the back. So yeah. if you put the phone in the back seat, it keeps you from texting and being distracted while you're driving. And at the same time, when you get out, your mind may be in a thousand different directions. Um, keeps you from getting someone that's very, very important to you in the back seat. Absolutely. Uh, so before we end out real quick, I'd like to uh, point out, Michael's asking uh, the, the social media and the marketing to point out Bahalia South. If you are in Bahalia South, that's along Watson Road, uh, Highway 309 South, Woods Road, Cooper Road. You are eligible for North Central Connect, so give us a call, 662-932-3500 uh, for North Central Connect or northcentralconnect.com. Uh, we would love to see some more of the people in Bahia South getting uh, the fastest, reli most reliable internet. So <laughs> That's it for July. We are uh, going to be making some announcements regarding uh, Membership Appreciation Days, our annual meeting, um, all kinds of stuff happening over the rest of the summer. But uh, keep, stay tuned, and we will see you guys in a month.